My son Josh is a great kid. He's always been the quirky and curious type, taking apart watches, toys, and the like, just to see if he can put them back together again. His curiosity, however, took a dark turn when his mother died. Josh became a different kid after that. He suddenly became obsessed with the notion of death and what it means. Thus, it came as no surprise when I found out what he had decided to do for his science fair project. I'm testing the line between life and death, Dad, he had said matter-of-factly as he sat eating his jam and toast. Uh, what do you mean, buddy? Watch this. Josh seized my iPhone, which had been resting on the table, and flung it into the kitchen sink before I could stop him. Josh! Josh turned the water on and seized the can opener, whacking my poor phone repeatedly. The screen cracked and the phone itself died. I wanted to yell, but I knew that that wasn't the right thing to do. I had to discipline him some other way. Josh, why would you do that? Do you know how much it's going to cost for me to get that fixed? Don't worry, Dad. You won't have to pay for anything. He picked the phone up out of the sink and ran upstairs to his room. I stared after him, shaking my head. I seethed about my son's troubling, spontaneous behavior all day at work. When I got home, however... I found my iPhone, screen completely fixed and all. I picked it up, studying it, and found that it was working as if nothing had happened to it at all. Buddy? Josh came running down the stairs, goggles over his eyes, and a PlayStation controller in his hand. Who did you get to fix this? And when did you get the money to pay for it? Josh tilted his head. What do you mean? I did it myself. That was my first experiment for my project, Dad. I'll move on to phase two and document everything tomorrow. I watched, confused, as he ran back up the stairs. I had no idea what he was up to, but I was just happy that I didn't have to pay an arm and a leg to get my phone fixed or to get a new one. Josh's little experiment seemed harmless. Then came phase two. I walked into the kitchen the next morning, prepared to make breakfast and coffee, and stopped in my tracks. Josh was standing in front of the counter, a pigeon strapped down to the cutting board in front of him. I immediately had a bad feeling about this. Josh, buddy, what in the world are you doing? Josh held up a large pair of scissors. It's phase two. Now watch this. I lunged towards the counter, but it was too late. In one swift move, Josh had decapitated the helpless bird. There was a sickening clipping sound, and then the blood was leaking all over the cutting board and my kitchen counter. This time, I lost it. Josh, what the hell is the matter with you? Why did you do that? Josh looked frightened by my reaction, as though he hadn't expected me to lose my mind after watching him kill an innocent animal. Dad, I already told you. It's phase two. I dropped him off at school and called a psychiatrist. Maybe his mother's death had hit him harder than he was letting on. I have heard stories about serial killers killing live animals when they were children, and I'll be damned if my son turned into a killer. I scheduled an appointment for the next day. When I got home, I found Josh sitting on the couch in the living room, writing in his journal. His poster board for his project was leaning against the wall by the TV. I couldn't help but notice that there was bird crap next to the TV as well. Josh, what is... A pigeon swooped past my head and landed on the couch, cooing softly. I jumped at it, hoping to grab it before Josh could, but he made no moves. The pigeon shot back up into the air, out of my reach. Why is there another bird in here? 
I swear if you... It's not another bird, Dad. It's the same one from earlier today. Josh and I stared at each other for a few seconds. I was sizing him up while simultaneously wondering what the hell had suddenly gone wrong. That can't be Josh. You cut that bird's head off, remember? Yeah, and I put it back on. I brought him back. This project is going really, really well, Dad. I'll beat Cindy Piggins for sure this year. I was entirely positive that Josh had just captured another bird and was losing his mind. But when I checked the garbage can, the bag that I'd placed the decapitated bird in was gone. This had gone past the point of too far. Josh had gotten rid of the corpse and was attempted to convince me that he had somehow raised it from the dead. This was meticulous and premeditated. I really did worry about my son, and I'm not ashamed to say that I slept with my door locked that night. Well, until about two in the morning, that is. I was woken by the last thing you want to hear at two in the morning. Someone beating non-stop on your front door. Well, beating may be a harsh word. Whoever was knocking was doing it forcefully. But there was not much strength behind the knocks. Still, it scared the hell out of me. But not nearly as much as the sight of Josh standing in the living room. White as a sheet, staring at the door. Josh, what are you doing out of bed? Josh turned to me, his eyes wide in terror. What? What's the matter, pal? Go back upstairs. I'll figure out who this is. Don't open the door, Dad. I... I messed up. The slow knocking continued behind him. Messed up? How? Josh stared me in the eyes. I wanted to... to do something really good for Phase 3, so... I brought mom back. Knock. 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 Joshua. Your mother has been dead for almost two years. This isn't funny. I made a move for the door, but Josh jumped in front of me, grabbing my hand. Don't... Don't open it, Dad. Don't open it. He and I are still sitting in the house. The knocking has stopped, but now there is a clawing at the window. I keep asking my son if he can undo this mishap, but he says only one thing. I'm going to beat Cindy Pickens for sure this year.